Hello, welcome to Algorithms. Uh, my name is Saurabh, and today we are going to discuss about uh, cybersecurity capability maturity model. Uh, so this is not a regulatory requirement, but it does uh, provide you with a best practice guide for assessing cybersecurity maturity, and then you can effectively apply it to your business. Okay. Now you can do this assessment, uh, and uh, along with the uh, relevant sec uh, security controls for your industry such as ISO 27001 and IST 1.1. For Australia region, it is ASCS Essential 8 and Information Security uh, Manual. So before I get into uh, the model itself and uh, its uh, different domains, I would like to share uh, uh, the story behind this cybersecurity capability maturity model. If you remember, uh, December 2015 in Ukraine, uh, uh, around a uh, quarter million homes uh, uh, were plunged into darkness uh, when a hacker uh, attacked uh, one of uh, Ukrainian national power grid. And uh, it was believed to be the first successful attack, uh, cyber attack of its kind. And after that event, uh, US Department of Energy and National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, uh, developed uh, a cybersecurity capability maturity model in response to these kind of uh, devastating attacks. So now you see this model is uh, uh, is very thoroughly designed, keeping different dimensions of uh, cybersecurity in mind. Okay, so let's. So when we talk about uh, uh, cybersecurity capability maturity model mm -hmm. there are 10 different domains mm -hmm. and as you can see uh, uh, each domain uh, has its own uniqueness in its category so let's talk about uh, for instance uh, risk management uh, uh, so the objective of this domain is to establish cybersecurity risk management strategy uh, how do you manage the uh, cyber security risk activities how do you control it uh, and then the next is asset change uh, and configuration management uh, how do you manage your asset inventory how do you manage your asset configuration uh, what is the change control process and then what are the management and uh, monitoring activities identity and access management how do you establish and maintain identities uh, control access and the management and monitoring of those activities situational awareness how do you perform logging uh, monitoring establish and maintain a common operating picture management of activities information sharing and communication so the objective is how do you share cyber security information and uh, how do you manage these activities event and incident response continuity of operations so how do you detect cyber security events how do you escalate events and declare incidents what is your response to incidents what is the process and uh, plan for continuity and then how do you manage those activities supply chain and external dependencies management so you have to depend uh, you have to identify dependencies uh, you have to manage dependency risk and you have to manage activities. So one of uh, uh, one of uh, the good example in this one is uh, nowadays a lot of organizations are using open source software and packages. So that is one of the dependency. So you have to identify those dependencies and what are the risk associated with those dependencies uh, and um, how do you uh, manage those risks? What are the security controls you have in place to make sure that uh, it is not going to cause any uh, any risk uh, to your environment? Workforce management, uh, assign uh, cybersecurity responsibilities, uh, uh, develop cybersecurity workforce. Do you have a cybersecurity center of excellence or it is just uh, one or two folks managing the complete uh, uh, security aspects of your organization uh, awareness in the area of cyber security how are you spreading it is more about training and education and then cyber security program management how you establish uh, cyber security program strategy a sponsorship for the program uh, how do you maintain the architecture 
uh, do you have uh, so most of the cases what happens when we talk about enterprise architecture we have seen the business aspects of it that how the uh, business capabilities are aligned with the uh, 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 with the technology uh, applications and data but security is not taken care in a comprehensive manner but now it has become very important you have to have a proper security portfolio within your uh, enterprise uh, architecture and make sure that every element or component of your enterprise architecture especially at the uh, technology level application level data level uh, and platform level how you are making sure that uh, uh, security it is secure and you are cyber resilient okay now uh, secure software development so in my last presentation i spoke about devsecops so devops is pretty much in adoption but how are you uh, integrating security and it is everybody is talking about it but uh, it is a very complex topic it is complex architecture how do you implement it i have explained in my last presentation different aspects of uh, devsecops and uh, what are the different components involved you can have uh, one or other vendor that's a different story but uh, if you are doing uh, infrastructure as a code or if you are doing uh, uh, if you have devops if you are uh, if you have identities if you are implementing multi-factor authentication how are you going to manage those things how are we implementing uh, security on top of it and how those things are uh, monitored and managed those are very important things along with that uh, scanning tools and at what stage you run those scanning tools uh, what sort of uh, scanning strategy do you have when it comes to DevSecOps? So those are the examples I would say in the cybersecurity program management, especially when it comes to uh, secure software development. So you don't spend time uh, in development and then in security. So it's like uh, it runs parallelly and it gives you flexibility as well as uh, in terms of uh, speed, you are able to launch your applications uh, or go live on time so these are the 10 uh, different domains and the objectives i discussed uh, this is it from my side if you have any questions please feel free to drop email and i'll be discussing more about uh, uh, these uh, domains and how these domains can be managed with the different uh, uh, tools uh, on azure as well as aws so now this part is easy so when I say asset change and configuration management, now what are the tools that you need to implement in order to do this? And uh, is, there a, is there a checklist? So uh, maybe in future presentations, that's something I'm going to cover so that you have a complete list. These are the domains and these are the objectives and these are the, this is how you are going to uh, uh, control it uh, you, using AWS or Azure or some other cloud or GCP maybe. Okay, thank you, bye.